Hey there, lovely to see you. Welcome to my arena this morning, out again in God's autumnal glory. Hallelujah. Reminds me of that verse from Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? If I go to the highest heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths of Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn and fly to the far side of the seas, you are there. Even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Hallelujah. God's spirit is everywhere. God is everywhere. And because God is everywhere, God can be found anywhere, even here right now. Amen. What's been on my heart this week is Julian of Norwich. Julian of Norwich was a 14th century mystic, a wonderful woman of God, a lady of God. Not much is known about her personal life, apart from the fact that she lived through the Black Death. She was six years old when the Black Death came to Europe in 1348, and that was an horrendous disease. You think the coronavirus is bad? Try the Black Death. 20 million Europeans were wiped out during that first um, epidemic, pandemic of the plague in Europe. One third of the continent's population. And as a six-year-old, she witnessed it, she lived through it, she saw it all with her own eyes. Can you imagine the trauma? And then it came back when she was 19 and she lived through it again. And then it came back when she was 26 years old and she lived through it again. So that shaped her life, her experience of what it was to be human, was to be surrounded by episodes of hell and death and decay and disease and suffering. And then when she was 30 years old, she had a fatal or near fatal disease and she was on her deathbed and her family called the priest to give her the last rites. And it was while she was on her deathbed that she had a near-death experience and Christ appeared to her and gave her revelations and she wrote them down later. She survived. She lived a long time. She wrote them down later and they became known as revelations of divine love. And if you can get hold of that little booklet, I would say do and read it. It'll feed your spirit. And in that she gets a revelation of Christ crucified and what he went through because she was lifting up the suffering world to him and saying, why, O oh Lord? And in response, she saw Christ on the cross, carrying the sins of the world, carrying the broken planet in his own body and in his own wounds. And as she mystically saw into the wounds, she saw creation covered, embraced in the love of God. She saw, she saw creation being reborn and the new creation coming forth out of the wounds of Christ, hallelujah. That's the gospel. Through the cross of Christ, everything is forgiven. Everything is reborn. Everything is renewed. When you come and ask forgiveness, when you come and open your heart to God and say, surely there's a place for me in your wounds. And Christ says, yes, they were for you. They are given for you. My whole body is given for you that you and the whole of creation may live, hallelujah. So that was the revelation of divine love that she had. Christ says to her in one of the visions, it was necessary for sin to enter the world, but all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. And that's what she held on to. And I want you to hold on to that today. Scripture says, behold, I make all things new and God will wipe away every tear from her eyes, and there'll be no more sickness, disease, suffering, or death. And Paul says to us in 1 Corinthians 15, that when Christ has subdued and reconciled all things, then he shall hand back the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the fully realized kingdom of God to the Father, and the Father shall become all in all, everything to everyone. So be encouraged this week, no matter what you're going through, and no matter how bad corona seems to be in its effects or after effects, all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. Amen.